we saw some cases of people like Gauri, Indra and Ram Gopal. However, one thing common in them was that they all were engaged in the retail business wherein you buy and sell in small quantities. Mostly in retail business, you deal directly with the end consumer. We have other side to this trading in agricultural produce, where all the items are traded in bulk. This is known as wholesale trading and the people engaged in it directly are known as wholesalers. In this part of the documentary, the main focus is on the wholesale trading in paddy. The mill owners and the big traders directly purchase paddy from the farmers in large quantities. We will learn as in how exactly this is done as we learnt about retail trading by small traders. Let's see the documentary and learn more. In case of small traders into agricultural produce, the government has set up Raitu Bazaars. In case of wholesale trading, similar to Raitu Bazaar, government has set up something called as Agriculture Market Yard where farmers can sell their produce and get paid immediately. During our survey, we visited a place near Nilore called Raichur. Here, we met a farmer by name Sharma. Sharma grows paddy and this year he has got a very good produce. This year's harvest is about 60 quintals of paddy. Now he is loading the bags full of paddy onto a tractor to reach 1 AMY in Nellore. We also came along with him to get the experience of an AMY, of an agriculture market yard. After reaching the agriculture market yard of Nellore, Sharma unloaded his bags and joined the queue for auction selling. We saw many such farmers there waiting in the queue for the auction procedure to start. Then at about 10 am the committee members came and started putting a slip on the bags indicating the name of the farmer and the amount of paddy in quintals. After that about 11 am wholesale traders, rice mill owners came to the paddy heaps to check the quality of paddy. After some time, the committee members began the auction from the first paddy heap of a farmer. That day's minimum support price was fixed at Rs 1080 per quintal by the government. So the committee official had to start the auction from that price. Minimum support price is something that the government announces every year for crops like rice, wheat, etc taking into consideration the fair cost of inputs as used by the farmers to bring out one produce. In certain cases, when there is no buyer or wholesaler to buy the produce of the farmer, at more than the minimum support price, then government agencies like Food Corporation of India buys the produce from the farmer at minimum support price. This is a way the government ensures that the farmers at least get a minimum price for their produce. Otherwise, farmers are always free to sell at a higher price than the minimum support price if there is any buyer willing to pay. The auction process here is something like this. The auction starts by inviting bids from the buyers. Buyers are the wholesale traders willing to buy paddy at a certain price. After the bids are received, the AMY committee officials announce the highest bid and start a count of three. If another trader calls for a higher bid before the official complete counting three, the auction progresses. In such cases, the AMY committee official counts three again for the new higher bid. If the count up to three completes, then no further bid will be allowed even if there is someone willing to pay. By the time we were understanding the auction procedure, we saw that the auction for paddy brought by Sharma has started. We just moved nearby to witness how it is happening. There were several agents and mill owners crowded near Sharma's paddy. They all found that this paddy was of very good quality. It was dry and with very less thalu, 
that is the ill filled grains the traders and the rice mill agents increased the rates when the auction of sharma's paddy began that day sharma got the highest price of the day for his paddy it was fixed at rupees 1150 per quintal which was fixed by a big rice mills agent there were many other farmers the same day who just got rupees 1100 for their paddy after the auction completed and the rates of paddy was decided for everyone's paddy then amy committee officials noted down all the rates bid by different traders for the entire paddy heap then they went to their office and noted down the name of the trader and the slip number then they informed it to the respective farmers about the maximum bid they have got for their paddy in this process sharma also got to know the maximum bid rate he has got for his paddy sharma was ready to sell at that rate thus the officials further noted down the rate the quantity of paddy and the total amount to be paid by the trader on a slip and gave it to sharma it is like in case a farmer is not selling at maximum price bid by the trader then he or she can wait for the next day's bidding process or up to one week in case of traders if they want to buy paddy from the amy then they have to pay license fee to the amy committee and when the trader purchases paddy in a deal at amy markets then he or she is supposed to pay rupee 1 for every 100 rupees of purchase as a commission to the committee as such the farmers are not required to pay any commission however they are also required to pay rupees 3.50 per every 100 rupee of trading towards loading unloading cleaning and maintenance charges Actually for farmers this commission is deducted by the trader while making payment to the farmer and then the deduction is paid to the AMY office Another fact with respect to AMY market that we got to know was that sometimes the farmers selling at AMY have to spend rupees 10 per quintal of agricultural produce towards transport and other charges This is many times higher than what farmers pay when they sell in their villages. In this context, we saw that after all this, the mill agent came to Sharma and paid the amount written in the slip after deducting the AMY charges. What we observed from this whole activity was that people or farmers like Sharma who own sufficient quantity of produce with them prefers to sell their produce at agriculture market yard the reason for doing this lie in the following arguments given one it is seen that in case of amy there is no delay in payments or charges for the on the spot payment as in the village as here in amy the sale is by open auction and the farmers get a fair chance to get best price possible However, we saw another thing also. Some of the AMY officials are corrupt. They join hands with traders to give farmers the lower prices. But this does not happen everywhere. In Andhra Pradesh alone, we have somewhere around 100 AMYs. Almost around one fourth of the farm products are traded through these AMYs. Now, you all must be thinking that what happens to the rest three fourth of the produce? Let's see this now in the next part of the documentary.